The Flash finally makes it to theaters after numerous delays and under the long shadow of controversy. Ezra Miller has been nothing if not busy, between choking out fans, multiple cases of assault, burglary, and accusations of grooming, leaving firearms around children, abduction, and even starting his own cult. That's nothing if not ambitious. But controversies and scandals, they're nothing new to Hollywood. They date all the way back to the very beginning of the industry in 1921, with the first major scandal, when actor Roscoe Fatty Arbuckle was put on trial for the murder and rape of an aspiring actress named Virginia Rapp. After two hung juries, he would eventually be acquitted, but his reputation and career would never recover. Or more recently, there was Roman Polanski, a legendary director who fled the country after committing statutory rape of a 13-year-old girl. Why am I bringing them up? Well, the Hollywood system does have a bit of a habit of protecting their own. Sometimes those intentions can be well-placed and other times biased or self-serving. Fatty Arbuckle would continue to receive payments from his friend Buster Keaton and shadow direct on some of his films. Roman Polanski continued to be financed by the Hollywood system and even won Oscars after being made a fugitive of the U.S. government. Often, sometimes the only say you get is with your wallet. A lot of videos on Flash are saying they're just going to be judging this film. And you know what? I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not. Because to do so would be disingenuous on how I feel and also how the viewers should be making more of a critical moral decision. I would be lying if I said the idea of Ezra Miller getting a pass for beating women and potentially harming children doesn't kind of make my blood boil a little bit. It does. But there is also the argument to consider of separating the artist from the art. If Leonardo da Vinci was revealed to be a serial killer tomorrow, does that make his art any worse? A storyteller, really when you get down to it, is just a job. Much like a plumber is just supposed to fix your clogged sink, and we don't really worry if they're a good person or not once they've actually gotten the job done. And perhaps we should be looking at artists the same way, and seeing if they just get the job done of making effective art. And a lot of people put their talents and passion into this film besides just Miller, and it would be unfair to discount all their efforts. But at the same time, a decision has to be made on if it's worth it to support a film where a questionable individual is going to be making royalties off the back of your ticket. And some may say, what about second chances? Everybody deserves a good comeback story in the vein of, say, Robert Downey Jr. when he was cast as Iron Man. But the difference here is RDJ did his time, quite literally. Whereas Miller seems to have gotten nothing but the lightest of light, you know, just taps on the wrist, with creators already poised to welcome the actor back into the fold. Also, we're talking about accusations of child abuse here, something that sits very, very poorly with about 99% of people on the planet. The question is gonna come down to you. What do you feel comfortable with supporting? And is the movie worth it to walk into that gray area? Going back to our plumber analogy, did they at least fix those pipes before they went home to their side gig of, I don't know, identity theft or dog fighting or something? Let's jump into it. The movie follows Barry Allen, whose father's innocence hearing is just coming up when Barry learns that he can travel through time. And what a great coincidence because he also learns that the newfound evidence won't clear his father's name. He instead decides to travel back in time to prevent his mother's mysterious death and his father being chucked into prison, creating an alternate timeline that may end the world or even the multiverse at large. The movie pitches itself as this action comedy, but the comedy here can be a little hit or miss. My particular showing was very, very cold on it, but I have heard others getting a kick out of it and having a great response, so I don't want to be too tough. Comedy is subjective, after all. Maybe it was just, I don't know, a, a tough crowd for the night. But it does rely a little too heavily at times on this kind of almost Dumb and Dumber-esque comedy, thanks to Barry's alternate, who can sometimes get overbearing and grating, and at his worst, be just outright annoying. Miller, fortunately, plays a much more toned-back version of The Flash from Justice League, almost to the point where it feels like a different person. This is a fortunate thing because the character is more mature and likable, and I don't think I could have handled two derpy flashes. So Miller gets to be both simultaneously more likable in the movie, but also weirdly enough, more, you know, punchable, I guess. But as much as I talked about Miller's scandals at the beginning, let's be honest here. The main draw of this movie is the return of Michael Keaton. Even the advertisements try to make it look like it's almost his movie. And frankly, who can really blame them? Keaton is great in the role again, and one of the best parts of the film. Though he is here mostly as this overblown member Barry, his inclusion doesn't really feel that organic, because honestly, you could have swapped this version of Batman out for any other, and it would change absolutely nothing. Unlike in No Way Home, where a lot of the old Spider-Man actions felt really authentic to their franchises, such as when, and spoiler for that movie, such as when Garfield catches MJ, or Maguire stopping Holland from killing the Goblin, they felt authentic to each Spider-Man's personal arc. 
It's also missing the tone of the Burton films. If you're going to have The Flash traverse the multiverse, it's a huge missed opportunity not to bring back in that gothic aesthetic. And even though you get Keaton in the suit, he is kind of at his best when he's outside of it. Otherwise, it's pretty clearly a stunt double or some horrifying Jimmy Neutron quality CGI. The movie is at its best when it's focused on The Flash and Keaton's dynamic or on Barry and his mom's relationship. This is where the film really finds its heart and soul, and you do care and feel for how Barry missed out on his life with both his parents, and those interactions tug on the heartstrings. You can understand his desire to do something against common sense to try and fix his family's past. Because of this, the first two acts are solid enough and are held up by an entertaining premise and just enough sentimentality. It's the villain that really kind of ruins all this. And no, I'm not talking about the half-assed villain that shows up for two seconds at the end of the first act and disappointingly kind of muddles the third. I'm talking about the visuals. This movie looks terrible. I mean, eye-gougingly bad. There's no way around it. This movie was delayed for a year and a half, so how does it look half-finished, as if the effect artists were being rushed to the finish line? Maybe they didn't want to sink more money into this after the scandals? Because it did have a few cool ideas. But often the effects completely ruin sequences, like in the third act, where it may as well have been just a CGI animated cartoon, with the Batman transforming into these formless rubber men, or the opening action, which featured some of the most horrific CGI babies I've seen since, I don't know, the Twilight franchise. There's nothing here that's close to being as good or inventive as the Quicksilver scenes in the X-Men films, though I will throw a bone to the time travel sequences. They still look as if they were rendered on a potato, but at least they were inventive in how they showed the passage of time. And remember how I said the first two acts were solid despite their flaws? Well, once you get through the third, in retrospect, they almost feel like a countdown sequence to a self-destruct. The third act cranks the bad CGI up to an 11. Absolute CGI sludge. It's made even worse by falling into the common pitfalls of the time travel genre. A lot of paradoxes and plot holes. It comes with the territory sometimes, but a lot of this is just lazy. It makes absolutely no sense when you stop to think about it for more than two seconds. Like, why would someone deliberately start this timeline when their motivation is to end it? Or why certain characters die and others don't for very specific actions? Or why don't the berries just, I don't know, just travel slightly further back in time to solve a specific problem? And it tries to treat their big villain twist as this huge surprise, but you'll see it coming from a million miles away. Like, gee, I wonder who the mysterious speedster in the first act is going to end up being. It really just gets kind of head scratching from the start of the third act to kind of the bungled final shot. And the worst part is it comes so close to being decent due to solid character work. It has a great final emotional crux that it immediately undoes. You think Barry learned his lesson only for him to go and do the exact same thing, not two seconds later, rather than doing the obvious thing and using his godlike powers to just break his dad out of jail. And if you are waiting for the movie to resolve the mother's death, don't hold your breath. It never does and never will with this franchise rebooting next year. As for the villain, it's a last minute heel turn that really doesn't feel set up or earned. In the end, this isn't an outright catastrophe and there are good things to be found in those first two acts, especially if you are one of those just dying to see Keaton back in the bat suit. But in the end, it falls to a heavy, endless barrage of half-finished CGI, hit-and-miss jokes, and a complete miss of a third act that leaves you just kind of bewildered rather than satisfied. It's not worth the moral conundrum. It's the equivalent of that plumber we mentioned before who just fixed your overflowing toilet, but now somehow you have this sink with an endless drip. My recommendation is give yourself the peace of mind and just watch a far more competent multiverse movie that just came out with Across the Spider-Verse. Or better yet, watch it again and catch all the things you missed. But those are just my thoughts on The Flash. Despite the scandals and rough edges, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below or if you're thinking of seeing it or not and why. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. Keep those reels turning.